Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Richard Wei, and I'm from the Google Brain team. Today, let's talk about Swift. So traditionally, there are two ways of building models in Python. Uh, one way is graph building. The users are required to explicitly build a graph and run it and pass it to, an, uh, to a session uh, at runtime. And the other way is eager execution. Eager execution allows you to write everything in the same uh, uh, or in, in the source code, and uh, you interpret it line by line. And it's really easy to use. But there's a tension between graph execution and eager execution. Graph execution has great performance, but it's not very easy to use, uh, especially when it comes to control flow. Eager execution is super easy to use, but can be challenging to achieve high performance, like graph execution. Well, can we com combine usability and performance? Well, what we are building is something that combines the ease of use with high performance for your machine learning code. But to do that, we have to do something more than just writing a new library. We have to, we have to innovate in the programming language. Machine learning is so important to us that we're willing to adapt a, new pro uh, adapt a programming language in an entire software, software stack, since we need First-class machine learning capabilities and primitives. Not only do we need to uh, the easy, not only do we need the ease of use, high performance. We also need an open design process driven by an established community for the language. This brings us to the Swift programming language. Swift is a fast, modern programming language, and it's super easy to use. It's cross-platform, has a clean syntax like Python. And it has all the powerful capabilities like type inference, optionals, and supports functional programming, and all the great features. So what exactly is Swift for TensorFlow? Well, the key component of Swift for TensorFlow is just a magical tensor type. You can write anything using tensors. As you would expect, you can initialize a tensor like this, like Python. Or you can use a full power generics to power your models, libraries, and applications. Well, math operators like sigmoid and matmo are type-safe generic functions in Swift without the need of namespacing when you use them. When you combine things together, it's nice and clean. The programming style looks just like Python's eager execution. Well, as you see, Tensor just works and is part of the TensorFlow library written in Swift. However, it works very differently from other language bindings because TensorFlow, while well, Tensor is, su is supported as a first class citizen in the programming language. For this, we built a technology called Graph Program Extraction in the Swift compiler. In addition to, uh, well, in addition to the ability uh, uh, to treat tensors as first class, citizen, first class citizens, we also need the ability to tr train models using automatic differentiation. It's graph programming extraction using graph pro using automatic differentiation and do interesting thing interesting things even with Python through interoperability. Well, all of these components are integrated natively in the Swift programming language, providing great productivity for the developer. So let's start with the TensorFlow library. The TensorFlow library has all the common APIs, like the Tensor API and Data API. In the Data API, you can use uh, data set initializer, you can use functional zip and batch operations, just like uh, TF data in Python. Well, in addition to nice looking TensorFlow APIs defined in Swift, you also have access to all the raw TensorFlow APIs like this. Tensor code sits alongside the rest of the Swift program, just like eager execution. And it interacts with uh, arbitrary user-defined data structures and algorithms. But will it actually execute line by line, one statement, one statement at a time, just like eager execution? Well, the answer is no. The TensorFlow library works quite differently from all the language bindings. Tensor, Swift for TensorFlow is a full-fledged compiler and it makes our code run fast without sacrificing the ease of use. The technology is called graph program extraction. So how does it work? Well, with easy, 
Well, um, we want users to write code like eager execution, but, want, but we also want the graph uh, level performance. And we want uh, to support native language control flow, so your control flow like ifs and whiles can be, uh, can be compiled directly to a TensorFlow graph. And we want, um, we want the compiler to handle data transfer between the device or between devices, or between the device and the host. So the burden is now on the compiler, not on the developer. Developer don't even have to think about it. So this is how it works. Well, data set operations such as zip and batch work as well as, t uh, well, they, um, they, work on, uh, they work in a graph. Um, tensor operations such as matmol can, be, can also be represented as a graph. When Swift compiler sees the code, the Swift, the Swift compiler automatically turns this into a graph by identifying all the graph extractable operations. So the Swift compiler compiles this code, compiles the graph extractable operations into a TensorFlow graph. And that will be part of the, part of the binary that the Swift compiler produces. So it's one graph. At the same time, since it's compiling the graph, it produces error messages before even running your code. It catches, it catches some, some, some shape errors and all the type errors. Now, with graph program extraction, we can combine performance and usability. But often in machine learning code, we also need to see, we also need to be able to differentiate code and train models. Well, that's one of the key things in machine learning algorithm. Well, a common way to do that is to take advantage of automatic differentiation. Well, although most automatic differentiation, differentiation tools are implemented as a library, well, we want to take full advantage of being able to improve a programming language. So we build automatic differentiation also into the compiler. So automatic differentiation in Swift works on uh, custom data structures. It works on um, TensorFlow as well as lots of um, uh, standard library functions and st standard library types. And as a user, you can define your own type to be differentiable. For example, you can use your, you can define arbitrary structs, enums, and other data types and make them represent a vector space and they, are, uh, they suddenly become differentiable. So the core of the system uh, is a differential operator. This is actually a keyword in Swift because we built that into the language. For example, we have a um, floating point, 32-bit floating point operation. Uh, it's a function. And to differentiate this function, we just throw a differential operator at it. And we get a gradient, and we can call it. It's all functional. The same thing applies to the tensors. I have a tensor inference function uh, that computes a prediction. I can throw a differential operator at it. Or I can get the prediction by calling it. And then I can also get, a get the gradient of it and apply the gradient. And I can use a code like this for training. Swift also supports custom gradients. This is a common, commonly requested feature. Well, for example, we have a, a times operator and we want to apply some custom, custom gradient on it. All we have to do is to use the differentiable attribute to specify the reverse mode adjoint for this function. So when automatic, when automatic differentiation sees the code, it'll automatically call into uh, the adjoint when it's differentiating data flow. Well, because automatic differentiation is language integrated, it shows you errors at compile time when you're differentiating some non-differentiable function with cursors pointing exactly at each dif non-differentiable operation in the call stack. It's really useful. And also, in the future, we plan to support um, showing warnings for uh, numeric stability. This is all, so all of this is enabled by um, having automatic differentiation built into the compiler. 
But since advanced automatic differentiation is immensely useful for machine, learn machine learning research, we ask support for arbitrary control flow, including loops and recursion. And then control flow can also enable differentiating um, through all the tree data structures defined using algebraic data type in Swift. And we'll also support APIs for manip manipulating gradient of some variables, um, compile time warning for uh, numeric stability, and the ability to compute four mode Jacobian vector products and four Jacobians. Well, with all the features providing a super easy to use programming interface in Swift, we also care a lot about the ecosystem. Since so the machine learning ecosystem relies on a lot of Python libraries, we don't want to lose the ability to call into Python libraries and use them in Swift. For that, we build Python interoperability in Swift. You can write, you can import a Python library using Python to import. It's like Python. And you can use NumPy using Python syntax. Users can directly import their favorite libraries directly in Swift and use them as if they're writing Python. This gives great compatibility with the entire machine learning ecosystem. So for Python, you can use your favorite libraries, libraries like NumPy or Pickle or gzip to load some images. It's that simple. So Swift supports um, interpreted mode, scripting mode, and Jupyter notebooks. And you can um, write interactive code as if you're writing Python. And we are releasing an Iris tutorial on our website. And you can follow the tutorial and um, try it out. If you, want to get, uh, if you want to participate in the development, you can download the development tool chain from our website. Um, everything is open source. On GitHub slash TensorFlow slash Swift, you can find our technical documentation, uh, white papers, and everything. And we have an open design process as well. So this is the for TensorFlow. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>